Hey everybody, CT Hippo here. Uh, so, time for another little project. I'm kind of stuck at home today with other responsibilities, so I figure I'll work on building something. Um, what I want to do is build a uh, mounting point for the electronics that I use for rec hunting for the uh, Liquid Logic Remix XP10. I've been using the uh, uh, Everest over there, my Piranha Everest, and uh, decided I want to use the Liquid Logic, which is more of my everyday boat anyway. I was mostly using the Everest because it was on top of the truck when I wanted to go do some of these things, and uh, so it was kind of like, well, that was easy. I built a uh, built a mount for the Everest, which is this guy for holding things. That's the uh, mount for the depth finder, fish finder on the left, and I was using it for the screen for the underwater camera on the right. Um, you can see it had, uh, so these pieces on the side um, just sat on the deck as spacers, and then the hole here that uh, I used for the camera mount, it went up through that. So obviously that's not gonna quite fit the same on the remix, but I want to do something similar to that. And what my plan is, is to build an assembly that's got a hook that goes onto this rescue point. So it'll hook on like that, and then fold down and go over this bolt. This is my standard quarter 20 camera mounting bolt. And so that'll give a, a rigid backbone here. And then have two pieces that go down into these grooves and uh, I'll just cut some cut some material that fits into those grooves. It'll mount on the bottom of a plate. It'll sit down in there and then it'll be bolted down with this nut. Um, so that'll give me a rigid base and then I can go however far I need to go side to side. Probably take the deck rigging off. I pretty much don't use it anyway. And that'll be my mounting system. So um, first thing to do is to figure out the hook assembly there and we'll go from there. Unfortunately, it turns out this battery is almost already is already almost dead, so I'm going to go change batteries and then we'll head to the shop and start cutting on something. All right, so we're out in the shop and it's time to start uh, start figuring out how this is going to work. So I've got some scrap UHMW here. These were left over from another project that I did and uh, I'm going to use that. I did a little playing around with it on the existing boat and uh, I need something a little thicker than this. And I know that, so if this is the, uh, the bottom of the plate that uh, the electronics are going to sit on, what I actually want is a shape kind of like this. And the bar itself is going to hook in like that, and then the, uh, the screw in the plate will keep it from moving this way, which would release it doesn't need to actually be probably this long, probably something like this is the shape I'm going for. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and load it up probably on the bandsaw and cut that out and probably just cut it across there. And then uh, that'll give me, you know, more or less the shape I need and uh, we'll um, yeah, it'll also give me points here to drive screws into to hold it all on. So that's the next step is to head over to the bandsaw.
so now we find out if any of this is going to work. We've got our boat here. There's the rescue point. Have to go in kind of like that, and that needs to be deeper. Okay. That's why we do these things. That rescue point was thicker than I thought. So I'm going to have to do is cut out more in here. Come down lower and then cut out. And then probably some in the back here, which um, isn't terribly concerning. This isn't going to be a high stress point. Um, there's really the only, only stresses that should ever be on this system are the inertia of the uh, electronics rattling back and forth. And that should be fairly minimal. It's not like it's a load bearing. I'm not going to lift the boat by it. So whack on this some more and try it again. So now that the uh, hook is done, next step is to figure out how big the plate needs to be. What it, I want it to do is to hold the uh, underwater camera system and the depth finder. And, uh, you know, they want them to be mounted in front of me so I can see them and use them. And uh, so what I'm going to do is use this piece of Lexan. Um, I think this was actually a uh, store display. I got a bunch of these for free from the uh, Habitat Home Store in, down in um, Mount Vernon. And I think that they lock together with that uh, that slot there in the middle. You lock to them together and make an X pattern and blah, blah, some kind of store display. Anyway, it's polycarbonate. It's clear. It was free. Life is good. Um... So I got a piece of that that was left over. I cut some of it off for another project. And I'm just using the leftovers here. And the, uh, the size of the, the two pieces here pretty much defines how big it needs to be. Um, I can probably get away with it that way. <laughs> Need a little bit of room here in front for the... Uh, where the, the wing nut goes, but that's probably about right. So I'm going to go find a Sharpie here, which can be a real challenge in the shop. And and mark it. What I'm going to do is put a piece of heavy duty 4 inch Velcro on the bottom of the box here. Put the, put the hook side on here where it won't stick to things and the loop side on here where I don't care if it does. And so that way that will just sit kind of like that and hopefully stay put and I won't have to get too carried away with mounting it down. Obviously this isn't really designed to go on a boat. Um, just kind of doing the best we can with it. So, next step is to drag the table saw out and make that cut. While I'm doing that, you can listen to me babble about the, uh, the thoughts that go into the material selection here. For the hook itself, I'm using ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. It's uh, an engineered plastic. It's renowned for its abrasion resistance, its chemical resistance, and it takes a fastener really well. And I like that for these kind of projects because the other options I could use would be wood or metal, but both of those are going to corrode or rot, which is kind of the same thing, in a saltwater environment, whereas the plastic is basically indestructible as we all know. Was that giant island in the Pacific that's a floating plastic will tell us. 
So for things like this where I don't need strength as much, um, I like to use the plastics, put them together with wood screws, works beautifully. And, you know, plastic is uh, frequently cheap and well, sometimes free. So unbury the table saw here and we'll get cutting. that's done, the next step is going to be to find the center of the uh, plate, mark that, and I'm going to install the hook. So I need to know both where the center of the plate is, which I'll get by measuring the plate from side to side, and then I also need to know how where it fits far and aft, and that that will have to take it out to the boat. So. Please stand by while I find my measuring tape. It's a general rule of thumb when I'm doing stuff like this that if I don't spend half my time looking for my tools, I'm doing it wrong. Today, I'm definitely not doing it wrong. All right. So that is 11 and 3 quarters inches. Half of 11 is 5 and a half. Half of 3 quarters is 3 eighths. A half plus three eighths is five and three eighths. No, five and five eighths. A half plus three eighths. Five and seven eighths. I'm going to put a mark there at five and seven eighths. Now, let's go see where this sits on the boat. Oh. So that's an interesting problem. It turns out that for this to work, this distance needs to be greater than what I've got here. I made the plate the minimum feasible distance, but it turns out that that is too small to fit the space. So we get to cut another plate. A lot of this and a lot of projects that I do can really be described as failing forward, and that's okay. That's a good system. Um, it's going to work in the end. The materials were free, and I'm learning what I'm doing as I go. I'm good with that. So it turns out that the minimum dimension on the plate I'm going to put an inch to the forward end to give me room to hook that up. Uh, the plate's 12 inches. That's probably going to work pretty good. And we said that this was... So let's do a 12 by 12. Okay. 
So I'm going to go back in and grab another sheet of polycarbonate and cut a 12 by 12 piece out of it, roughly. Or possibly 12 by, you know, whatever this is. Let's see what this stuff is. Mm, okay. So it's uh, that 11 and 3 quarters that we had before. So now we have the substantially larger plate, which I guess probably doesn't show up very well because it's clear. Um, I know I said I wanted 12 by 12. I ended up going 12 by 13 and a half because that's where the little legs in the um, original material were. I'm sure I'll use it all. I can always cut it down some more, but hey, why not? So that gives us this. And if we undo this, handy dandy wing nut, Ugh. take that out of there, puts this right there. I like that. So, I'm going to go get a marker and mark that. All right. Ugh, I got my marker here. So we know that's a quarter 20 bolt right here because quarter 20 is the standard for uh, f photographic mounts. So I'm going to, actually I guess I could be reasonably smart about this and measure it. 13 and a half, half of 13 is six and a half, six and three quarters, that's right where I put it. All right. So if that's there, then... to come over six and three quarters down here which is there if that's on there we want that there and so the hook will mount just like that So, what I'm going to do is go drill this hole here, go slightly oversize with it, and then check that that's just right, and then mount the hook. For this drilling process, I'm going to start with a small bit. It's probably a seven, now let's go three thirty seconds. The idea here is the small bit is more precise. I can control it better, moves around less, and then use that as a pilot hole and fill it with successively larger bits. So, go there. I'm gonna hop up to, uh, it's got 530 seconds. Also, polycarbonate has some weird quirks to it. It likes to shatter if it's irritated. And so, by doing it this way, I reduce the amount of stress on the material.
I'm gonna make my final hole at 5 16 which is just slightly oversized. That was interesting. So what was happening there was the uh, these are made with uh, the actual drill bit and then a socket or a plug, I don't know, whatever, that they go into. The shaft was actually spinning on this. Uh, joys the cheap drill bits. These are, after all, Harbor Freight shit, so they're cheap and they're disposable, and the way I go through them, it makes sense. But that is kind of the trade off. So, I'm going to take this out and try it. So that will go on there like that. The other reason to go slightly oversized is you get into some weird stuff with the angles on that. Um, because when it's in service, this isn't going to go straight down. It's actually going to rotate down on to that bolt. And so I may have to go even bigger oversized with it or possibly drill drill it at an angle, drill you know, something like this for that to fit on there the way it should. In retrospect, it probably would have made more sense to have done this part first and then this, but again, we're learning. So, I like that. I'm actually going to get the drill and bring it out here and do it here. Alright. So, again, I'm going to start pretty small. 564 this time, I think. that I'm gonna you know I'm gonna use a number 10 and a 1 8 hole is a good pilot hole for number 10 I'm gonna work up to 1 8 Sure, I've mentioned the uh, the polycarbonate tends to be a little brittle, and so whereas with most materials, I don't mind being having my holes slightly undersized. With this, it can occasionally cause this stuff to just shatter or split or otherwise do nastiness, and so you want your holes just slightly undersized. probably going to be bigger. So line that up. Just like that fit on there like that. It's got some more play to it than I would really like, but I can live with that. 
So, let's drill the second one. So, there's our plate. Uh, you can see it rattles that way quite a bit, but it's quite stable fore and aft. It has some yaw motion, but not a whole lot. And when we put the two pieces in here that fit in these grooves, that'll fit a lot, fix a lot of that. So, next step is change batteries yet again, and we'll pull this deck rigging off. All right, really? Now that I've got uh, the plate this far, I made a couple little modifications while you weren't looking. Basically, I cut this down a little bit so that it fits tighter. That's really about it. Um, took the deck rigging off, obviously. Next step is to build the piece that goes in here. To do that, I'm going to use this piece because I've got it. I'm going to cut couple little pieces off of here and so what I'm doing is I'm putting it flush up against here and a mark point there point there and then go cut it on the bandsaw on approximately approximately this line right here and then it's gonna be a lot of shaping on the uh, belt sander to get it to fit into this hole, which you can see the profile of that hole there a little bit. It's more or less straight down here and then curves up. So, be a lot of grinding with the belt sander, but it just needs to get in there. And then what this will do is this will keep it from moving, you know, side to side and rotating any when it's installed. So, off to the belt, off to the bandsaw. So, I've changed my mind here a little bit. I'm actually going to go ahead and whack this off in the chop saw so that I have a square cut for the next piece and do that first rather than uh, go straight to the band saw just because it will make it easier to, to do the next cut. That's probably good enough.
So, now to do the other one. Alright, well, so we've got our pieces. Let's go, uh, let's go see how they fit. this in place. I think that'll work. So, get out the drill with a small bit, drill some pilot holes. So I'm doing the first two, Oof. and then I'm going to get the screws in place on those, and then come back and do the second two. Just to make life easier. Eighth inch here. Eighth inch here. And then I'm going to go up one size on the clear pieces. Which is probably what, at 930 seconds? Force. Yeah, whatever. Right. Now, to get some screws. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work. I'll hook on there like that. That goes in like that. And a little torsion. Those fit in like that. Yeah, not horrible. Not the greatest, but not horrible. Um, I think I can live with that. So, let's roll some more holes. like that to have been a little more stable and I may put some spacers in it, but we're well on our way. And with that, we've got a platform that's not going anywhere. I like that. I think that's good. 
Let's uh, see what happens next. So, as you can probably see, I'm sitting in the boat playing with the, uh, the new platform. I guess it needs a name, but I don't know what that would be. And I'm kind of exploring the ergonomics issues of this. And uh, as you might imagine, this stuff gets a little thorny. So here's what I'm looking at. We have the platform itself here, obviously. There's my fish finder, sonar, bottom finder, whatever the hell you want to call it. And then there's the reel for the cable for the underwater camera. And uh, all of this, plus the screen for the camera itself, needs to fit on here together somehow. So there's a couple issues. Uh, obviously, I need to be able to reach the crank. And I can't have it any further forward to where everything wants to fall off because it's all slippery. Can't have it any further forward than where I can reach. You know, so if it's like there, that's the very end of what I can reach. Um, need to be able to hit the buttons on this. And then, on top of it all, this needs to sit over here someplace as well. And uh, so, how that all fits together is still kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. Um, on the plus side, there are some good news here. This and this can use the same 12 volt power supply. Either this little one here that came with the screen or a big box in the rear compartment. Um, I have to figure that whole system out at some point as well, but that will make life a little easier. So, I'm not sure how this is all going to work together yet, but uh, that's what I'm working on. I also want to keep that uh, this quarter 20 bolt up here on the reel, because that's a handy place to mount the camera that I'm using right now, and either have it pointing forward so you can see what I'm looking at, or pointing back so I can talk to you. Um, what I'm thinking at this point is some kind of U bracket or a bracket that comes from the deck and up over and you know secures in like that. I can still reach the uh, the crank. In fact, I can probably use a piece of plumber's tape and come right over that. But as you can see, the the piece of material there isn't quite long enough. So um, might put a longer longer uh, another piece of this longer or I'm not sure yet but that's where we're at right now right now for most people this would be an entirely usable system but uh, you know if you just had a fish finder that was there or maybe a fish finder and a GPS you know could sit here and here it'd be great for for what the average person does I've got this reel to deal with so I've got a few bigger headaches and uh, yeah Keep chewing away at it. So after chewing on this pretty much all day, this is where I ended up. Um, obviously by now you're familiar with the plate assembly. Used a couple pieces of plastic uh, plumber's tape to stick this down. A couple screws, one on either side. Moved the mount for the fish finder to there. Also added a cleat, which was useful for uh, tying off the uh, cable for the underwater camera so I can keep it at a fixed depth when I'm trolling around. Uh, still don't have a solution figured out for how to mount the uh, video screen for the underwater camera, but you know, it'll come. Probably big Velcro. Whole thing's pretty solid. I mean, it's not, you know, not bulletproof, but it would keep the uh, keep it attached to pretty much anything short of maybe getting bashed by a wave and surf and I don't plan on taking this rig into the surf so all in all fairly successful um, could it be better yeah probably uh, like I said I still don't know how to mount the uh, screen for the underwater camera I'm gonna work on that some more tonight and uh, I'm going to call this one a success. So until next time, thanks for joining me and we'll see you around YouTube.